Hi everyone, this is Dave again with another construction video for beginning rocketeers. Today I'm going to look at the three bandits package of rockets and as you can see here you actually get three rockets for the price of one. My local hobby store had this for $14 which breaks this down to less than $5 a rocket. That's a pretty good deal. Now these rockets are a little bit smaller and they use mini engines. Uh, 13 millimeter diameter versus the 18 millimeter of the standard Estes engine. And these have the advantage in that the smaller engines cost less. So for the same price that you would get three 18 millimeter engines, you can get four 13 millimeter engines. Now you might be saying, well, yeah, but I can't go as high. Well, these are very lightweight rockets, and as you can see on the package, their estimated altitude is up about 550 feet. That's still pretty high. And personally, I tend to launch on relatively small fields, usually on the baseball field at the college where I work. And so rockets that go really high often tend to be lost to rooftops or trees or other hazards. Uh, whereas the, the smaller rockets that don't go quite as high, I can still have a lot of fun with and learn a lot from them, but I can usually get them back again. So in just a moment here, we'll open up this package and see what's inside. Uh, I do want to tell you ahead of time that all these rockets go together about the same way. So for the first one, I'm going to go through it pretty much the way the package describes in the instructions. For the other two though, I'm going to show you some other tricks that you can do in place of the construction shown in the directions. Doesn't mean you have to do them. You could do all three of these according to the instructions, not destructions, and still come up with really great rockets. But there are some tricks here that not only you can apply to these, but to other rockets as well. Okay, so I'll be back in just a minute and we'll start in on checking out the parts. So here are the parts as they come out of the main package. Um, the smaller parts, as you can see, are actually segregated for each of the rockets. And so there's the, the purple rocket parts, the green parts, the orange parts. And I'll tell you one of the things right away. If you want to mix and match these, you can. Okay, so if you want to have an orange nose cone with the purple fins or the green fins with the purple nose cone, do whatever you like. They're interchangeable. Okay. Uh, the only choice you really have to make initially is just which fin assemblies are going to go onto the body tubes. Um, and if you keep all your body tubes the native white here, even that won't make any difference. And in fact, you can switch a lot of this around even after the rocket's completely built. So we will want to take a look here, and I'm just going to choose one of these as an example. I'm just going to put the other ones aside here. Okay, so first thing and most obvious here is the body tube, right here in the instructions. Okay, and when you dump out all these little parts, make sure you've got some place where you collect them easily. Bouncy camera there. Okay, so first of all, we have a little parachute shown here. I'm going to put that aside. Um, and one of the things I would suggest with this one. Uh, even though I said we're going to do this by the instructions, is actually replace this parachute with a streamer. And the reason I say that is the parachute is so small that it's actually not really any more effective than a streamer is, and a streamer is less likely to tangle and fail. Okay, So you can do this, um, and I'll show you, you can even make the, the parachutes interchangeable, so you can try it with a parachute if you want. If you decide that, yep, Dave was right, this doesn't work very well, you put a streamer on instead. Okay, but I'm going to set this aside. We know it's there. Okay, we have a fin assembly, and these come in two parts. We'll eventually glue those together. All right, we have a nose cone here, and we also have the nose cone insert, and it's not the same color. It's going to just be this translucent white. That'll fit in here. We'll have to glue it in here. Um, and then few other plastic parts here. Um, this will be the launch lug. So it's not the straw type one that you see in a lot of rockets. Um, and then these are the engine caps. And these will be uh, retaining the motor inside the fin assembly here when it's all assembled. 
and they give you two of them uh, so that you have a spare in case you lose one. Okay, so these are different from other model rockets that you may have seen that have a metal clip. This takes their place. And then the last part here is the elastic shock cord, and this is what absorbs the initial shock of the ejection charge that will blow out the parachute and the nose cone from the body. Okay, so everything appears to be here. Um, these little cutouts that they show here, these will be the shock cord anchors. We'll talk more about those when we get to the assembly part. Now, in addition to the parts, we're going to need just a few tools here. Um, you'll need something for cutting. Uh, you can use a hobby knife like this uh, or a pair of scissors. There's not a whole lot of cutting to do in this kit, but you'll need uh, a few instances. What you're going to need, though, are glues. Now, the instructions recommend that you have um, white glue or carpenter's glue, so either one of these. And as I've mentioned in other videos, these each have their, their pluses and minuses here. Um, wood glue tends to set up quicker and stronger, uh, but the Elmer's glue all or other white glues, this uh, gives you a little bit more working time. It also is a little bit runnier, so if you need it to penetrate a little bit, this is going to work better. If you want something thicker that stays in place better, the wood glue works better. For this particular kit, either one of these is fine. You won't probably any, notice any difference. Okay, now the instructions also call for plastic model cement. And for gluing plastic pieces to plastic pieces, this is great. For gluing plastic to cardboard or paper, it's not as good. And in fact, I've had models where this type of glue being used to glue a plastic piece to a paper or cardboard piece have actually failed. Um, if you're going to do this, I highly recommend one of two things. Either get plastic model cement that's of the runnier kind, uh, usually comes in a little squeeze bottle rather than a tube, or, and this is what I really recommend, is get some thick super glue, the gel type super glue. Not the runny stuff like this, we don't want it. Um, because it'll just soak into paper. It's good for strengthening things. But for gluing plastic to paper or cardboard, I find that the gel type of super glue here, and see it comes out as a, as a gel rather than just running all over the place, this I found is the best thing for that particular purpose. Okay, So for this model, I would recommend that you have some of this, and I'll wipe that off in a minute, um, some of this for the plastic pieces, and then either the white glue or the wood glue. So let's start building. The first thing we want to do is get the two fin pieces here. And these have little holes and little pegs along the side, and so these are going to interlock when properly put together. And it's a good idea for all of this stuff to make sure that it dry fits. So before you put any glue or anything on these, make sure that everything fits together the way it should. Okay, so that should be like that. Um, you can also, if you skip down a step here, this is a good time to test your motor clip here. And so this is a, a bayonet type mount. You simply push it on. and then twist it. Uh, in fact, this is feeling really tight, which means there may be a little bit of plastic in here that we need to remove. Yep, and you can see it right there. Okay, this is called flash, and it's just a leftover of the molding process. And you can just remove this with a hobby knife or a little bit of about 100 grit sandpaper. Um, now, if you've built other 13 millimeter motor rockets before, usually you'll see inside here there's a smaller tube that would actually hold the motor. In this case, the plastic ribs here and this kind of half ring, these are what are going to make up the motor mount. And so those will hold the motor inside and then with the uh, little twist turn clip on the back, that will keep it firmly in place. Okay, so I'm going to dry fit this again. All right, once more, I'm going to fit that. Oh, that fits in nicely. Okay, and then it just turns, and now that locks everything in place there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dry fit the next piece. So I'm going to put the body tube on here. 
And again, there's no glue yet. Okay. Um, the launch lug is going to go on this point, and it'll glue on there. There's some flash there we'll need to remove. And then the nose cone will go on there. So you can actually dry fit pretty much this entire model before you do anything else and make sure everything fits the way you want it to. All right, so now we're going to do this for real. Now the instructions are showing here um, to put a little dot of glue at the points along here. Um, what I recommend is actually doing it along the entire length. And the reason I say that is when you put the motor inside this, it's going to exert a little bit of outward pressure and these seams often open up again when you do that. So I'm just going to, oops, that's, you do want to be careful here. I don't want a whole lot. I want a really thin film, especially once I get down to here because this area is going to have the motor inside of it. So we don't want big globs of cement there. But make sure you do hit the posts. Be really careful around where the engine ring will go here. Right, again, you want just enough here that will glue together. You don't want big globs of it seeping out the sides. Okay, uh, And do this over some disposable surface so that you don't ruin a table or something with some excess glue. All right, now I'm going to push this all together. Okay, um, I've got a little bit of glue coming out of here, but not much. If you get a lot coming out of here, go ahead and just take a tissue or a paper towel and you can wipe that off. Um, especially in here, if it makes a little smear, nobody's going to see it. Um, you want to be careful of doing that down here. So you might see there's a little glob of glue right there coming out near the fin. But most likely, if I try and wipe that or otherwise try and clean it up, it's going to make it look worse. So most likely, that will go away. It'll dry up there. It won't be very noticeable. And that is the, the drawback to working with plastic cement is it's pretty much there when you put it in. Okay, so I'm just going to let that dry for a little bit. Okay. Um, now, while this is drying, and actually something I can do, and you won't only want to do this if you don't have any glue coming out of here, I'm actually going to put the body tube on. Uh, I'm going to wiggle it back and forth just in case there is some glue there. I'm going to make it so thin that it won't hold very well. But that's just going to help hold this in place while it's drying. Um, if you're really careful, you can actually put on... the clip here, uh, but I say if you're really careful because if there's any glue around this outside surface you'll end up gluing this to the fin can and you don't want that. And it looks like I'm probably going to get away with this without needing to do that. Okay, so I'm a, I am going to go ahead and leave it in the body tube and I'm just going to set that aside on its end to let that finish drying. Um, the launch lug is next, and I'll do that after the glue is set on the fins. What we can do in the meantime is actually skip down here to the nose cone part, um, because it's just sitting here all by itself. And here what I want to do is glue this base into the nose here. Um, and the easiest way to do this without making a mess is to actually put a little bit of bead of glue on the inside edge of the nose cone. You want it just up to the edge but not dripping over it. Go ahead and do this all the way around. Okay. And now I'm going to take the cap here and I'm just going to slide that in. And I like to twist it back and forth a couple of times, and this just makes a good seat between the inside of the cap and the inside of the nose cone. And you can just hold this here for a few seconds, and then set it aside to let it finish curing. 
Um, and so letting glue dry and watching that is about as fun as watching paint dry. So I'm going to fast forward things a little bit here through the magic of video and we'll come back and do these intervening steps that we've skipped over. Okay, so now this has been drying for a while. Um, I've put the launch lug part on here and that's just as easy as it looks like on the directions. Just put a bead of glue around the edges and squish it over the bumps there. Those will align it for you. And now what we're going to do is attach this to this. And the instructions show using plastic cement for this and as I mentioned earlier this can sometimes lead to a failure. If you're going to use this method use a, a generous amount. I prefer to use the gel type of super glue. Anytime I need to bond plastic to non-plastic here. And so I'm just going to put a bead of this around in here and be really generous about it. All right, so you can see there's actually a lot of glue in there. Um, and any excess will just get pushed forward. It won't be that strong. But the strong part's going to be in that film where these two meet. So now I'm just going to slide this in and give it a little turn, again, just to help lock in the glue between the two surfaces. And that's pretty much done right there. Okay. Um, I can tug on that and it's not going anywhere. So the bond is almost instantaneous. Um, and it will be instantaneous if you get it on your finger. So that's the, the drawback of using super glues or cyanoacrylate glues as they're generically called. They bond skin instantly. Um, if that does happen to you and you can't get your fingers apart or whatever appendages you glued, a little bit of acetone or nail polish remover will get rid of that for you. For the next part, we're going to set up the shock cord and the parachute. And here we need to cut out one of these little trapezoidal shapes here. These are the shock cord mounts. And if you don't want to ruin your nice, neat instructions, you can just photocopy these and, and cut them out. Um, or just cut out a piece of paper that's roughly the same shape. The numbers just make it easier to do the, the folding as we go through here. And this is actually one of the things that in the later rockets I'm going to show you an alternative to this type of amount. Okay. In our instructions here, it shows um, gluing this and then placing the shock cord up inside of here. All right. So what we're going to do is it's going to turn like this. The shock cord, you want to put it kind of a diagonal so that it goes through the two and the three. And what we're going to do is then fold the one over the two and then the two over the three. And in the instructions it's showing to, to glue and then fold and glue and then fold. You can actually do all the gluing at once here. So I'm going to get my white glue. And what I'm going to do here is just put a bead of glue down the middle of this. Okay, and then you can just take your finger, have some paper towels nearby, you can wipe your finger. All right, and then I'm going to lay the shock cord. Again, do this diagonally because as it folds, if you do it straight, it's going to make a big lump and you don't want that. So now I'm just going to take the one here, I'm going to get it to come up, there we go. Now I fold the one into the two covering part of the shock cord. In fact, it's kind of squish out of there, that's okay. All right, and then I'm going to fold this over again. And I'm going to move the shock cord over to the side and squish that down. And this is another thing, make sure you got something under your surface so you don't end up gluing a nice surface. Okay, and so now inside this, since I made a diagonal of the shock cord, the shock cord's laying beside itself and not directly on top of itself. Now, the other thing I'm going to do here, this side with the folds on it is going to get glued to the inside of the body tube. And so one of the things you can do at this point is just 
bend it a little bit. Give it a little bit of a curvature. Okay, and you can also work out some of the excess glue. Uh, and at this point, my paper is pretty much saturated with glue. And what we're going to do here is put this down inside of the body tube as far as we can. Okay, now in the instructions it shows it needs to go at least an inch. And the reason is you don't want the nose cone base here to hit it. And so you want this down. Now if you've got skinny fingers, you can actually poke that down fairly well. If you don't have skinny fingers, you can use the handle of your hobby knife, you can use a wood dowel, you can use a, a pencil um, to allow you to bring the, get this down a little farther than you could with just your little finger. So now what I'm going to do is put a little more glue on this. You don't want it dripping because we don't want the glue to drip off into a place we don't want it. But we do want this to be completely covered with a film of glue. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm not sure how well this will come across in the, the video here, right, but I'm going to drop this down, trying not to touch the gluey part here against the side yet. And I'm just going to drop this down. Right now, that already that's down further than I can get with my pinky. Okay, now I'm going to rotate the tube around so that the sticky side is facing down this way. And now I'm going to take my handle here and use it to press down against it here. I'm going to hold it so my thumb is right behind where that shock cord mount is. So that I'm, I'm supporting it here. And now that's actually down a, probably at least an inch and a half, two inches. All right, and I'm just going to move this back and forth and make sure that it's well seated. Okay, and now I can just pull a little bit on my shock cord here, make sure it's straight. And now I'm just going to set this aside once more and let that completely dry. Um, we want this to be good and set into place before we do anything else with the shock cord. This is the parachute that comes with the kit. Um, it's a, looks like a six inch parachute. The shroud lines are already attached for you. Okay, so you just have to find the loops to each one here and bring those together. Now, in the instructions, what it's doing here is having you pull these loops so they're equally taut here. Um, and then take this into a single loop at the end. Place that through the eyelet here on the nose cone. Okay. Um, and it's showing passing the parachute through this. It's actually easier just to pass the nose cone through. So if I just do that, all right, and then tighten that down. And remember, you, you want to have your other hand here still hang on to the shroud line so the lengths don't change. All right, but then you can just tighten that knot down, and it's ready to go. Okay. Now, if you do as I suggest and want to put a streamer on here, or maybe you want to try both, one of the things you can do is instead of tying this on more or less permanently is untie this and then you can go to your local fishing or sporting goods store and get a snap swivel. Um, you will need a fairly large one because the snap needs to be able to get across the plastic of this thing. Okay. And then you attach the swivel part of it to your shrouds, just like you would have here. And then you can snap that onto the uh, nose cone here. And that gives you the option of being able to take the parachute off, um, replacing it with a different parachute, or replacing it with a streamer. So these are two types of snap swivels that you might find at a sporting goods store, department store, as a fishing department. 
Um, and they're very similar. So we've got the swivel part here, which actually allows this to turn in opposing directions. Uh, and this is actually good on a rocket regardless because no matter how good you think you've got that chute balanced out and the, the shroud lines even, it always manages to spin a little bit. And so this will help keep things from twisting up too badly. Uh, the main difference is in the clip here. So on this style, um, the end of the clip is completely hidden within the clasp. Uh, and the advantage to this is it's less likely to get caught on anything. In this style, the clip actually protrudes outside of the, uh, the clip section, so the, the clip wire here is, is coming out. Um, the advantage to this is it's less likely to pull loose. Okay, so on this one, if you get a lot of tension somehow on the, the body of the, the clip part right here, this can actually pop down and would, would cause this to open. This one won't do that, but having these little protruding wires here does potentially have the ability to catch on something inside your rocket. Um, I've used both of these and I've never actually had any problem either way because these are over-engineered for what we're using them for. These are meant to handle many, many pounds of force and we're putting very little force on them. Okay, so whichever, you know, if you happen to have these in your tackle box, just use whichever ones you have. Alright, if we're going to do this with a parachute, um, again, you just want to gather all the shroud lines together and make sure they're even. Okay, and then come down here, make a loop, use your other hand to hold the rest of the shroud line material so they don't move on us and then we're just going to insert this through the loop of the swivel side and when we pull these through we need to make sure that we got all of the loops lined up with each other and then we're just going to pass the whole swivel body through all right and then I'm just going to pull down on these loops so that they come down around the base Okay, and now that's locked in really well. All right, and I can just, if I need to, I can just put it away at this point if I'm just going to store my rocket for a while. Or when I'm ready to launch, I simply open up the clip, put that on like that, close it up, and it's good to go. Now, notice we don't have the shock cord attached yet, but the parachute's good to go. Uh, and this is why you do need to have the bigger types of swivels, though. It's not because of the load that you're going to put on it, it's because the really small swivels that you might use for, say, ultralight fishing won't fit the snap part through this. Okay, so you do need some bigger ones. Um, you can go a little bit smaller than what I'm showing here, but not too much. Okay, so let's go ahead and come over here now to the rocket. Um, this isn't completely dry yet, but it's set enough that I'm not too worried about it. To attach this, we're just going to pass it through and just tie a couple of overhand knots on it. Okay, and go ahead and stretch it out, because as you stretch out that knot, when it comes back, it actually strengthens the knot. Okay, and then if you pull this side here, this should come in and then stop. Um, if you're really ultra paranoid, you can put just a little spot of Elmer's glue in there. Uh, but generally, you don't need to worry about it. What you do need to do every time that you're getting ready to launch, especially if this has been launched multiple times, is over time, the exhaust gases from the ejection charge will weaken the rubber here. And so it is a good idea to do a pull test here, um, because it's going to be a weak spot, usually at the knot and also a pull test for the mount. Now, I'm not going to do it because my mount's not completely dry yet. Uh, but just the last time I launched, uh, I actually had a rocket break right here at the knot. And fortunately, it was a lightweight rocket. It came down. It was unharmed. Um, and I had this really nice slow descent of just my nose cone. Okay, so now if I'm ready to launch, I can either go ahead 
and attach my parachute. Um, I'm not going to do it right now. I want to show you how to do a streamer here. And there's been a, actually a lot of research into streamers over the years because um, streamer duration is one of the NAR competitions. And the idea is that using a standard engine, can you make a model that stays afloat the longest using just a streamer? Um, and so kind of the consensus is that your streamer should be 10 times the length of its width. Now in this case, I've got much longer streamer here. Um, and what it means is that having the extra length probably isn't going to slow it down anymore, but it does make it more visible. Uh, and the same thing with having multiple streamers. Um, does having two streamers give you more drag and thus a slower descent than one? It kind of depends. It, it's not a simple answer. Um, in this case, I've made this setup. Um, this is a little piece of Kevlar cordage, and the reason I use Kevlar is simply because it's very flame retardant. It's hard to burn or melt it. Um, we would normally put a little bit of recovery wadding to prevent melting the streamer here. In fact, you can see it's had a little bit of melt damage there over the years. Okay, uh, but one type of streamer is simply made out of a polyethylene ribbon like this. And the nice thing about this um, is that you can get it in rolls at a local hardware store because it's used for flagging everything from property boundaries to trees for cutting to where you're going to put your deck. Um, and a roll of this stuff will probably last you your entire life. You can make a whole lot of streamers out of this. Okay. Um, now, one of the things you can do to increase the drag of a streamer um, which again is to increase how long it stays in the air, is to fold it. Now with a plastic polyethylene streamer like this, if I start folding it back and forth in little fan folds, and even if I press it down, it doesn't stay very well. Paper, on the other hand, does. And fortunately, if you go to the party section of your local department store, you can get a roll of crepe paper like this, also for not very much money, and you'll have enough of it here to make, oh, probably at least a few hundred rockets. The nice thing about it is it's already got all these nice folds in it. Okay, they're little micro folds, um, and these increase drag a lot. And again, um, kind of the rule of thumb is use the 10 times the length of the width of the paper. Um, and again, you can use more, but it's probably not going to slow you down any. Okay, and what you can do here, and you can do this with the other type as well, with the polyethylene, um, is you can either, you know, give it a little attachment point like this to put it on, um, or you can simply come down about a third of the way down your shock cord and just put the end of the streamer here like this and then put a little bit of masking tape or even just transparent tape across this. So you, you cover the whole thing on both sides. And, okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of masking tape here. Okay, and I'm just going to press that on there. Um, if you've got some that's kind of looped over the side like this, you probably want to take that off because you don't want any excess sticky material that might cause the, the streamer to get stuck. Okay, um, So you can do it this way and then rather than rolling a streamer I suggest folding it like this and so you just keep folding it end over end until you get to a nice short manageable piece and then you can and roll that tightly. Okay, and basically it needs to be small enough to go into your body tube like that. All right, now again, I'm not going to stick this all the way in because I still have a wet shot cord mount there. Uh, and you don't need necessarily to do it on the end like this. Okay, so for you know, if you're trying to get the, the greatest amount of streamer activity, 
um, for the lowest amount of mass, then you might use the, the 10 to 1 rule there. Uh, but again, a lot of times I use streamers just to make it more visible because these little tiny rockets, when they're way up in the sky, they're hard to see. And so another way you can mount this is instead of doing it on the end, you could mount it in the middle. Okay, and so then when it comes down, it's actually flapping on two sides, making it easier to see. Um, whether or not that makes it slower on its way down, again, the, you'll probably get as many answers from as many rocketeers that you ask that. Okay, so that is pretty much it. Our rocket is done. Um, we'll go ahead and put a retainer cap on here, just so we don't lose it. Um, I would put the, the spare one in a safe place, like in your launch box. Okay, so this can all be assembled. Um, I do have another video that's just a, a generic video on putting rockets together and making them ready for flight, so I suggest you check that. And uh, I'll have some other videos looking at the other two Bandit rockets that came in this set and some modifications we can make it for them. So after everything has been put in place and is thoroughly dried, you can finish this. Uh, now it's actually meant to be able to fly just the way it is. Um, no paint is necessary. And we do have this assortment of decals here that you can apply. They're self-stick. Uh, and you can put these on anywhere you want and any way you want. This is your chance to be creative here. Um, if you look at the instructions, they really don't give you anything. Um, but if you do check out the front of the package here, this is their suggested motif. Um, again, there's no reason that you need to use what they show here. Um, do whatever you want with it. Now, if you do want to paint this, depending on what you want to do here, um, if you just want to paint the body tube, I recommend doing that before you assemble the rest of the rocket. And just go ahead and paint this whatever color you want. You can use spray paint, you can use brush paint. Um, but get it all nice and finished, and then put the rest of the rocket together around it. And the reason for that is if you're going to keep the color of the fins and nose anyway, um, you're less likely to get slop over of paint from the body tube onto the other plastic parts if you've already done the painting here. Uh, if you brush paint this, I would recommend um, getting it to the color and texture you want and then use some fine sandpaper to smooth out the brush marks. Then apply the decals and then spray paint it with a clear coat and that will help preserve the paint, give it a glossier color or a dull color if you want a matte finish um, and also help protect the decals from peeling off. And that should be about it. So have a good flight with this as soon as you can um, and this is Dave Thomas signing off.